do the artist statement was inspired by a hymn written by St. Francis of Assisi in the 13th century called Canticle of the Sun. And of course, St. Francis is one of the most well-known saints, and he's my personal favorite saint. Um, he believed that God created a world that is beautiful and that is good. And in this hymn, he refers to the, uh, the world and its creatures as uh, our brothers and sisters, that they are a gift from God, and as such, a reflection of God's love, and they should therefore be valued and cherished by us. And so that was the inspiration for these drawings. When I studied the hymn, uh, to me I found it very rich in visual imagery. And as I read it, it would evoke certain images in my mind's eye, and those served as the nucleus for these drawings. And some of these images were very specific. For instance, from the beginning, I was pretty sure that Brother Sun was going to have uh, sunflowers and a rooster to greet the day. I was also with um, Sister Moon. I knew that there was going to be a full moon in a Gothic window. Other images were less uh, specific, a little more nebulous. For instance, um, Brother Fire, I only knew that it was going to have a lot of red and orange and yellow in it and was going to have a lot of energy. And then, of course, at the end there, Brother Wind, that was really not even visual to begin with. That was more of a feeling, because how do you draw the wind? Um, but as I say, these served as the nucleus, and once I kind of had a general idea of what the main characters were going to be, that's when I start kind of a research phase of the process in which I, um, I look for other characters and plants and animals to be in my drawings. As you can see, by looking at my drawings, I am pretty much incapable of leaving very much empty space anywhere. <laughs> and uh, so I've got to fill it up with something. So that's when I start the research. And this is really one of my favorite parts of the process because this is where I learn about all kind of creatures that I never knew existed before. For instance, when I was working on Brother Sun, I thought, well, is there an actual sunbird that really exists? And so thanks to Google, I learned that there are over 130 species of sunbirds. They are native to Africa and southern Asia, and they are really very much like hummingbirds in that they're very small and they drink nectar. And so in the uh, Brother Sun, I chose the crimson sunbird for uh, that particular drawing. Uh, on the other hand, with Brother uh, Fire, there is no actual fire bird. It's a mythical creature. But I delved a little further and found out that there are flame birds. The greater bird of paradise in New Guinea is sometimes called the flame bird. That's the bird that has the, the uh, brilliant yellow plumage that looks like flames. The smaller birds down here are flame bower birds, another native of New Guinea. So I really enjoy this research part of uh, the creation of these drawings because I find out all these things, different plants that I never knew existed. And so once I have the, um, the nucleus of the idea there, I will, and a list of, of different things that I might include in these drawings, I'll start the actual physical drawing. Um, generally, my approach is I, t I will sketch in what I think of as the main characters, which would be like the, the pair of swans here in Sister Water, or the, um, the pelican in the globe in um, Mother Earth. And that gives me kind of a, a, a foundation or a framework from which to start putting everything else in the drawing. And at that point, it, to me, begins to feel like a really organic process. I don't feel so much that I'm making conscious decisions about what to put in or where it's going to go. It really starts to feel as though the drawing is uh, is growing on its own accord. I'm planting those plants and they're growing and they're showing me where the next leaf needs to go or the next flower needs to go or where the next little bird needs to fly in. So it really becomes for me almost a meditative process at this point. And it really gives me insight not only as to how I want to, um, to design or to uh, fill up my composition, 
but at the same time, I feel like I'm getting a deeper understanding of uh, St. Francis's hymn in this case, which is what inspired it to begin with. So there's kind of a give and take there between the initial inspiration helps me to understand what I want to draw, and then the actual drawing of it uh, helps me to understand what the inspiration was in the first place. And so that, in a nutshell, is kind of my process of arriving at a series of drawings. And I'd like to just open up now for any questions that y'all might have about any aspect of it, technique or ideas or whatever. Do you work every day on your art? Did your Depends on how close the deadline is. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I, I ideally I like, even if I just have half an hour to work, I like to just kind of keep the rhythm going. I mean, right now, you know, I finished these three weeks ago and I haven't really been in the studio doing anything useful for a while, but I'll get back in it before long. But when you're doing these, like these, these seven or whatever, do you start one and finish it and then start the next one? Or do you have two or three or seven going at a time? I, I usually find I prefer to work on one at a time. And a lot of that just has to do with it. They, they will get to a point where um, I'm, I'm filling in the space and, you know, quite frankly, sometimes it gets a little bit boring. You know, how many more morning glory leaves do I have to draw? <laughs> and, and, I don't want to start a new one because the beginning of it's very interesting and you know when am I ever going to get back and finish that one so I find I'm more disciplined if I go ahead and finish finish what I'm doing but I will often toward the end of one drawing I'll start doing the research for the next one and the ideas for the next one. And so you, so you didn't have it all sketch, all planned out before you started no. on the first one? No. Yes. So when you work on these, they're really all from your head. I mean, you're not, you do, I mean, do you plot it out? I mean, do you not, know the size and Well, the, the, the size, I, I decide on the size to begin with. And as I said, like I would probably sketch in, say, these swans to begin okay. with. And then I know from the research that I've been doing, I've decided, you know, because this is about water, um, I have the, uh, the lotus flowers, which are a symbol of water and purity, and then the bulrushes or cattails of the little marsh wren, and I don't want to put all those elements in there, mm -hmm. but I don't necessarily sketch out that whole composition. I, I go back in and kind of really start at the bottom and let things start to grow up. Okay. Wow. So you have the field board and it just sort of you move it around. Right, and yeah. And sometimes I will even when there's a lot of um, different characters, I will sketch them out on tracing paper and move them around on the page and see where I want them to go and then transfer that when I've decided on the light. Can I ask you this, like, do you start out in graphite and do you plot yeah. it all out and, no, then, think, and, and, and then you put the color in or? I'll start with graphite for the main characters, but then I will start, when I start doing more of this detail work, I'll do the color pencil, even though, you know, some of this over here I may not have sketched in at all with anything. It may just be blank. This is an art question, uh, a, a media question, because I, I know Prismacolor is, it's, it's fair, fairly soft and uses the Prismacolor yeah. brand, mm -hmm. and so the, how do you sharpen the things? I use an electric pencil sharpener. You do? <laughs> because I always, I, had, I, I always spent the points, you have to keep a sharp yeah. point. Yeah, uh uh-huh. But I found that I always thought that electric pencil sharpeners just grind those things up. They kind of do, but it gives me in such a nice sharp point. I mean, it, it's probably in the long run kind of wasteful because sometimes it breaks off in there, and then sometimes you have to take the pencil sharpener apart and get that yeah. out. But yeah, it I just, works. Yeah, I remember my friend Billy Prescott at Co-op Bookstore used to sell a little sharpener. It would just sharpen just the point so uh -huh. it wouldn't get so long. Mm -hmm. But that must be terribly frustrating. Uh, yeah, at times, yeah. yeah. And then sometimes, you know, the, the wood doesn't yeah, sharpen it all gets the way. On the even. You've got to get that off. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I always think about it. It's, it's such a hard medium to work with. Yes? So which one you started first, and which one you finished last, and which one is your favorite? Okay. <laughs> I did um, Brother Son was first. 
and Sister Bodily Death at the end over there was the last one, but I think my favorite is uh, Sister Moon with the Owls. <laughs> How do you decide on starlings for the wind? The wind. The, the, well, the, the follow-up question is, how do you make starlings pretty? But that's enough. That's <laughs> enough <for you. laughs> um, well, wind was the one that I had to puzzle over the most. You know, brother wind and air. And thinking about it, and you know, on YouTube there are a lot of videos about not just starlings but other birds that flock in what they call murmurations. And you may have seen that it's huge flocks of thousands and thousands of birds that form like these big nebulous clouds, and then they kind of uh, swoop around. And to me, that kind of that was kind of like the air taking form. And so that's. Uh, and I think I chose the starling not just because they're one of the birds that do that, because but because years ago I raised a baby starling, and so I it, the only bird that I ever was able to successfully raise to an adulthood, and so I kind of have a little affection for them, even though they're kind of pests too. Carl, um, I really appreciated your uh, showing the process and the progress progression mm -hmm. of your drawings on Facebook. Mm -hmm. I, I just say thank you again for that. Because, yeah. Well, as, as I, I told you earlier, that kind of helps me because I'm, you know, I'm such a homebody and I'm a little bit isolated, I guess, in my studio sometimes, but that, you know, people comment when I put up something that I'm working on and that kind of helps me, you know, keep my enthusiasm up. Yes, I have a lot of your works and I'm trying to limit the obsession. <laughs> <laughs> so what is your next series going to be? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> As I said, I you know, finished these three weeks ago and I'm just taking a little time off, so I'm not even thinking too much in those terms right now. But there'll be birds and plants. <laughs> Yeah, my, that was something I was kind of raised with in a way. My, my grandfather, who well, he was a botanist, but he was a scientist, mm -hmm. and in his retirement, he was uh, very interested in birds, and he would build, he built his own feeders in the backyard, and when I was little, I'd go over there, mm -hmm. and we would watch the birds together, mm -hmm. you know, through the windows and in the back of his house, and mm -hmm. him being a scientist, we'd have to go look up their, you know, their habits and, mm -hmm. you know, identify them and all that kind of thing, and so that just kind of stayed with me. Okay. Yeah. And they also, just as a, as a symbolic thing, mm -hmm. in, in all cultures and religions, the, the birds generally will uh, be symbolic of the human soul or the human spirit, and so that serve that purpose as well. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Mary. Thank you.